Well, no, I think the June meeting, there were two policy errors by the Fed. The first was that they, they didn't just say, we're not going to give forward guidance. They said, don't believe a word we say, because they tore up 10 weeks of explicit forward guidance. And secondly, they seem to shift to put more emphasis on CPI, which the Fed for years has said is not really a great inflation indicator. And it's a very volatile indicator. And so those two policy errors have added unnecessary uh, volatility, unnecessary risk into the markets. Because what they basically said is, you can't trust what we say, and you've got to start looking at this really weird volatile indicator that is not a great reflection of necessarily longer term pricing pressures. The fact of raising rates, yes, I think that's fine. Um, the, the 75 basis point move doesn't make much of a difference whether you do 50 or 75 to inflation because it's, it's not going to have a full impact for another year or so. But I think a tightening now is appropriate. As we go forwards, I think the Fed is going to have to moderate the pace of tightening. That I think is clear because the risks to growth are increasing. I think particularly towards the end of the third quarter, the start of the fourth quarter, we're going to have some quite profound risk to growth. And the structural changes of the economy means the Fed, I think, needs to be very agile. I'm not convinced the Powell Fed has that agility. Um, very interesting about the forward guidance. And I understand what you're saying there, because I, I, I've heard this a lot, that they're given this forward guidance uh, and then, then they basically get prepped the market for this, strip that away. And I, I totally agree with you that that volatility will come. And yet the market reaction yesterday was stunningly benign. It, it kind of heard what it wanted to hear or certainly made itself believe it heard what it wanted to hear. So oscillation still to come in both directions, yeah? Yes, I think so, because the data flow is going to be very mixed. I mean, remember, data quality has deteriorated in recent years, so we're getting more revisions to data. The revisions are larger. We saw that um, after the June meeting when the Michigan consumer inflation expectations were suddenly revised down. The Fed have been saying, oh, no, we're worried about inflation expectations, and then suddenly they're revised down. So um, we're going to get, I think, a lot of these swings based on the high frequency data. And the problem is, I think, because uh, you know, faith in what the Fed says has perhaps declined a little bit. Um, you know, the, the, the spin around the data is going to be perhaps a little bit less convincing. I'm not sure whether it's very useful to navel gaze, but I'm going to do it anyway, Paul. I mean, if it wasn't for the fact that we've got inflation around 9% in the US, would the Fed be cutting rates today, given all the data we've got so far to show about the, uh, the slowdown in the economic environment? I don't think it would necessarily be cutting. Um, we've got a situation where I think on most measures, uh, I mean, even if inflation was at a more normal rate, you would consider the, uh, uh, the interest rate to be the lower neutral rate. We have, at least on the unemployment measure, an extraordinarily strong labour market. Um, and remember, unemployment is 0.1% above its all-time low. I mean, this is, this is not a, a normal labour market in that sense. Um, you've got a great deal of job security. Now, the real peculiarity, and this is what, of course, economists are wrestling with, on the one hand, we've got a very strong labour market with um, the, the very low unemployment. But on the other hand, because of the inflation, but also because of weaker pay bargaining power, real wage growth is negative, and actually the most negative it's ever been, if you look at real weekly earnings. So on the one hand, I've got a strong labor market, another a weak labor market. I don't think that's necessarily an environment to, to rush to give credit stimulus to the economy. It is an environment, I think, to be uh, a little bit cautious. Ultimately, though, I think if inflation comes down uh, over the course of this year, that is what will achieve the soft landing if they're able to get that. The problem for the Fed is that the inflation rate needs to come down before consumers run out of savings to bolster their consumption.